Oh, the damn what ifs. When I decided to launch my very first internet radio station, a plague of what ifs descended on me. Well, what if the power goes out? What if the internet goes down? What if my cheap PC laptop craps out? Now, I wasn't gonna let a couple silly questions sever the XLR to my internet radio dreams. Hells no. The answer to all those what ifs is as simple as three letters. V P S. That's right. I decided to host my station way up there in the groovy clouds, baby, using a virtual private server or VPS. Now, if you ever had a equally nutty idea, well, I got to tell you some, you right now are in the perfect spot. I'm not only going to walk you through the steps for success here, we're going to talk pros and cons of using a VPS setup. So, if you're ready, well, put your head in the clouds and let's go. We are on the air. Buckle up and put on your crash helmet. We've got a lot of ground to cover. First off, what the heck is a VPS? Well, straight to IBM. A virtual private server is a form of multi-user cloud hosting where each VPS is installed on a physical machine. But here's the key. It runs its own operating system and you could use applications like you would on your home computer, but in the cloud. And VPSs are usually cheaper than having dedicated servers. Now, when you Google VPS, oh my God, you're overwhelmed with a list of rando options. Like here's one I found that on paper looked pretty good for the price, but I've never tried them before, so I can't vouch for them. I get my VPS action from a company called Cloudsy, and these are my actual specs right here. And you need to make sure when you're looking for the service that you're able to find one that does meet the minimum requirements. And I think it's a minimum of three cores and at least four gigabytes of RAM. And then storage is very personal, because if you have a 20,000 song library, you're going to need a beefy hard drive. So after you've swiped your credit card and you're the proud owner of a shiny VPS, you log into your account and sign in to your server using VNC. And you're confronted with a blank canvas. So your first order of business is to start downloading apps. And by my count, you need seven. First up is a really good screen sharing program. I use TeamViewer. Then you need an FTP client so you could transfer files from your home computer to your VPS. FileZilla is a robust and very free option. Then, of course, you got to infuse a system with your database. We use MariaDB. Of course, you got to grab Radio DJ, virtual audio cables, an audio encoder, and a really cool silence detector I'll show you. I think one of your top priorities should be to get your screen sharing program up and running. Well, VNC is okay. I mean, it just doesn't compete with a team viewer, which is more robust and wildly free. And of course, you'll need to do this twice, once on your VPS, and you want to install and configure TeamViewer on your home computer, which you'll be using to take control of your VPS. Next, you want to make sure your VPS can accept an FTP connection. I know you're probably thinking, well, duh, can't they all? Well, I thought the same, and my first VPS server, it worked like a charm. But my second wasn't playing nice. And after numerous <laughs> angry emails with support, I kind of had to forge my own path and find my own solution to set up the server to allow for FTP connections. And I found this very helpful article that walked me through the steps. And if you're having this issue, we'll do the same. And I dropped that link in the description. After my VPS was FTP friendly, <laughs> I downloaded FileZilla, which is an FTP client. Basically, it allows you to transfer files from one computer to your VPS. Of course, there are plenty of FTP clients. You don't have to use FileZilla. Use the one that floats your dinghy. As you configure it, make sure you have the proper host information, username, password. A lot of that can either be found through your VPS account, or if you've had to set up Windows like I did in that previous step, you'll get the information from there. And once that engine is revved up, well, put it to work. Hit the gas and start uploading files. And this will take a while. For me, I think it was an overnight affair. It's really smart to have the same folder structure on both your home computer and your VPS. So just drag and drop those folders right over. Next up, we got to get you plugged in to those funky virtual sounds. And we head over to our favorite virtual audio cable provider, VB Audio. 
And after we get them installed, we hit that control panel and set them up. And keep in mind, anytime you tweak a setting, you need to restart your system. Next up, Mighty Moia. <laughs> You'll want to install MariaDB, and then you jump over and download and get busy with Radio DJ because you're going to use Radio DJ's database setup program to fine tune your MariaDB. And at this juncture, you have a couple options. You can install a brand new database or restore a previous database. And that's what I'm doing. I'm taking the database from my home base station and recreating it on my VPS. Woo, we are cooking along. Look at this, it's time to launch Radio DJ and get our hands dirty. And one way to minimize the amount of grime on your hands is to make sure to copy down your settings of your previous version of Radio DJ. So when it comes time to launch your VPS version, it's just simply quote unquote copy and pasting your settings over to match. And super important are the audio output settings. This is where you connect your virtual cable to Radio DJ. And we can't forget to give some love to the metadata export tab because you do want the now playing information, right? You know, of course you do. This is where you enter that info. And for those of you who use Radio DJ's built-in audio processing, well, you better enter your coordinates here. And one of the many moments of truth <laughs> where we go to verify tracks. Of course, none of them have been found, so we have to relocate them and tell the new database where to find our old but lovable tracks. So we've relocated them, now we have to re-verify. And what? Still not found? Uh-oh, senor. We got troubles in the cloud. And if you're up for a time-saving tip, well, I'll deliver one. Before you start this process, make sure on your home computer you've used proper keyboard characters. And it's easy to get tripped up by this, like I did. Some of my apostrophes were quote-unquote smart apostrophes, which were really big-time dummies. And they threw my entire system out of whack. And they're hard to spot sometimes. So I had to go replace the problematic apostrophes with just the straight apostrophes. And I had to do so with both the file names of the tracks and inside the database. If you're comfortable with SQL code, you could run a line of code in your database that'll automatically swap the bad for the good apostrophes. And after that time suck, we jump back to Radio DJ, we relocate, verify our tracks, and we're ready to move on to plugging in our audio encoder so we can boom our signal out to the world. So I use SE Caster. You use whatever you use, and there's no judgment. However, one thing we all have to do is plug in our virtual audio cable into the sound settings. And of course, there's a spot to enter our station info. And if you want the now playing data to come through, well, this is where you set it up and connect it to the now playing file. And most important are your stream settings, which are particular to whichever host you're using. So with all that set, I want you now to jump over to Windows settings, specifically system settings and the sound tab. This is where you double check that your output device is actually the audio virtual cable. Then you pop over to the sound control panel, specifically the sounds tab, and you want to choose no sounds. You don't want system sounds polluting your airwaves. Then you hop back to playback, click properties, and you just want to double check a couple of settings. Over in the advanced tab, you want to make sure the default format is set up to work with your system. And then these two selections should be checked. And once again, on the recording tab, do the same thing. Properties, check your format, and then these settings need to be selected. And one more tweak to make while we're in Windows settings, go over to the personalization tab, specifically the taskbar. I choose to set my taskbar up like this because it maximizes the screen real estate when I'm using screen sharing software. You don't want the taskbar getting in the way. This next Windows tweak could be controversial to some, specifically those who love to keep Windows updated. Well, the problem with doing that with a VPS is you don't know when those updates are going to hit. And if they automatically install them, it'll sometimes restart your system. And I think you know where this is going, knocking your station off the air. So I choose to permanently disable automatic Windows updates. If you're more comfortable with manual, well, there's a setting for that too. 
And while on the subject of dreaded dead air, I have to share this super cool silence detector app with you. Absolutely free, absolutely a must for really anyone with an internet radio station. Now, I already did a deep dive video on how to set this thing up and how to configure it to actually send you a text message when you go off the air. So I want you to check this video out and magically up to the right, there's the link. I mean, how cool is that? And the final dead air busting safeguard requires you to press Windows R and then shell colon startup. This will open up Windows startup folder. And in it are programs that automatically launch whenever Windows is restarted. Here's the thing. Even if you use that silence detector, you're not going to get notified until it's too late. So the best way to minimize dead air is upon a restart, have Windows automatically launch Radio DJ and the silence detector app. As for your audio encoder, some automatically do launch upon startup like SE Caster does. So you definitely want to make sure yours does the same. But what good is it to automatically launch Radio DJ if you don't have it set up to actually do something once it's opened? You got to hit your auto DJ settings and make sure these two options are checked. Back to that sassy startup folder, this is how you add programs. You right click, choose new and shortcut, and then click browse and find the location of Radio DJ. You hit next and you have the option to rename the shortcut if you'd like, and then you repeat the process for the silence detector app. My righteously rad all 80s station, Triple X 80s, has request functionality on the website. If this is something you'd like to also do, well, I'll show you how you create a new username and password to accommodate requests. So in Heidi SQL, you go to Tools, User Manager, and you're going to create a brand new user just for requests. For From Host, you want to make sure to select Access from Everywhere, and you give it a hard password. And for added security, you want to come down here, click allow access to, and you want to uncheck the following tables, drop and delete. Very important. Save that sucker and then head over to your website and make sure on the Radio DJ Options plugin, you enter your server information, which is the IP address of your new database, the proper username, password, and database name, and then you click verify to make sure you're connected. And just like that, in a new YouTube record, we have set your radio station up on a VPS in under 12 minutes. So after all that radio razzmatazz, the only question you should be asking yourself, do I really need this? Well, let's dive into some pros and cons of using a VPS to host your online radio station. First, the pros. Well, number one, it's pretty reliable. I've had a decent track record. Very low maintenance because the responsibility of keeping up all those servers, well, that's on the host to take care of that. And tied into that, there's zero upkeep for you. Someone else is, you know, making sure <laughs> there's new up-to-date hard drives, defragging the system and all that. Number four, no impact on your home broadband. So if you are running a radio station out of your house, I mean, your broadband theoretically could take a hit. And I mean, your station then becomes uh, at the mercy of the reliability of your broadband. Where with the VPS, I've had a pretty rock solid record with the stability of the broadband connection. Number five, you can control your station from anywhere in the world using the screen sharing software, which is pretty cool. And number six, there's some possible energy savings. I mean, I think they're offset by how much you're gonna spend on launching a VPS, which is the perfect transition to talk about the cons. Number one, expense. I mean, this could get expensive for some, especially if this is a hobby producing this much every month. You really have to do the math and figure out if the expense is worth the benefits. Number two, occasionally the interface could be sluggish, meaning when you're screen sharing, it could be quite the slog when you like double click to open a folder and it takes 12 to 15 seconds to respond. That is, you know, hair pulling. I used to have a full head of hair before <laughs> I started this. I had this issue and it just turned out it was a faulty server. So they relaunched my site on a new server and that interface is much snappier. So you really just have to kind of 
keep tweaking and trying until you get that right. Number three, you don't have much control over system updates or maintenance. Sometimes you get that email saying, hey, just to let you people know, this Thursday at midnight, our servers are going down for a little bit so we can perform maintenance. Well, when their servers go down, what does that mean? Obviously, it means your station goes down. And once again, you have zero control over that. Number four, oh boy, it's time consuming to upload your entire library to your VPS. But that is kind of the cost of doing business with a solution like this. So you just budget that in and a lot of that time could be spent while you're snoozing. You set the file transfers up overnight and then in the morning you're good to go. Number five, it could be complicated for some. You've seen all the steps, especially if you have to, you know, hotwire the FTP capabilities of your VPS. That takes patience and fortitude to get through it. But trust me, if you follow those steps, you definitely can handle this. And the sixth and final con really has to do with time again. It's pretty time consuming to have to import your tracks twice and then update your database manually. Now, this is something I didn't get into in the video, but here's a snapshot of what it looks like to import new tracks to a VPS run station. And I'm not claiming this is the best way. This is just a system that I've been using and it's worked. Doesn't mean it's the most efficient. I'd love to hear your ideas if you come up with something better. So what I've had to do is first import new tracks into my, let's call it my production room radio DJ. And those are all the same steps you'd use to import any track. So you got that. Now what starts chipping away at your time is what happens in the database and in the FTP process. After you've imported those tracks, you gotta jump over to your database, copy that information. I usually save it to a CSV file. Then connect with your VPS database, import those tracks into your database. Then you jump over to your file transfer software, your FTP client, and then upload those new tracks to your VPS. Then you log into your VPS, jump into Radio DJ, Verify the tracks. Oh, whoop, they're not there. Now you got to relocate those tracks. Ah, oh, they're there. Jump back to verify. Verify. Ah, we found them. Hallelujah. Despite the cons, you know, the pros really do squash those what ifs. And overall, I've been mostly happy with the service. I mean, nothing's perfect. And that's why it's super important to implement those things I talked to you about, the silence detection system, and also to configure your auto launch settings just in case your VPS crashes, you got to make sure when it starts back up that it's going to automatically open up Radio DJ, it's going to open up that silence detection program, because most of the times you just won't know what's going on up there in the clouds. But here's the thing, whether up in the cloud or right there under your desk, no computer is immune from the occasional crash. So you just have to protect yourselves by implementing some of those safeguards. Now, if you already have a solid home system, well, there's zero point to switch to this. But if serving up your station from home just really isn't an option, then you might want to consider this. I'm Jeff, the radio DJ dude, and usually at this point, I definitely would encourage questions. But you got to know something. I am far from an IT expert. I've really bared all I've got on the subject during this video, so not much more. Uh, I'm not sure how much more I could help you on this. Hopefully you got something out of this video, and if so, well please click those big bad buttons right down there, like and subscribe. Now if you didn't get anything out of this video, well I definitely encourage you to drive up to YouTube's headquarters right now, file a complaint in person. I know they'd love to hear from you, definitely. As would I for the next video. And until then, keep rocking those mics all over the world.